Hello everybody, welcome back to the Therapeutic Juice Exemption, show number three. I am your host, Juice, and today we will be talking about UFC Stockholm, uh, some of Kat Zingano's recent comments about the UFC athlete retreat, and more cyborg news. So uh, let's get right into it. So UFC Stockholm last weekend, uh, not a great card on paper, didn't have a lot of name value, but... The violence that the event produced more than made up for it. Uh, some of the highlights on the prelims, Demir Hadzovic starching Marcin Held with a knee, uh, a counter knee that came off an attempted MNR roll from Held. Uh, brutal stuff. There was Bojan Velikovic giving Nico Masuki the stanky leg of the year. Uh, Oliver Encap, newcomer, lost his debut to Nordin Talib. But uh, he showed a lot of promise. He, he has this crazy karate style, very Stephen Thompson-esque, very young, quick, uh, agile kid. I got taken out by the savvy veteran. I'm always a fan of the the older UFC veterans taking out the uh, dangerous newcomer that no one knows. I enjoyed that. So Oliver Ankamp, keep an eye out for that kid. Uh, I expect good things from him. He seems... Uh, very well trained and seems to have a bit of a mean streak, so I'm excited for him. Peter Sabata putting on the performance of his career against Ben Saunders, uh, landing his left hand, crushing left hand from the very early seconds of the first round to the very last minute when the fight was finished. Uh, kept dropping and rocking Saunders with that left and then a crushing knee uh, to finish the fight right to the tip of uh, Saunders' chin, just put the lights out. In the co-main event, Volkan Ozdemir, a guy that I was shocked was ranked above his opponent, Misha Serkinov, with only one UFC fight, uh, proved me wrong by flattening him in right about 30 seconds. Uh, check right hook, right behind the ear, the old punch of death, got Serkinov, flattened him, and Ozdemir made a name for himself and is now a legitimate top contender in a light heavyweight division that desperately needed new talent. So good on Volkan Ozdemir. And in the main event, Alexander Gustafsson uh, making his comeback against Glover Toshera. Uh, his comeback against Jan Blakovich didn't really count last year. This was his real comeback against Toshera. And man, he, he made it count and he made it ugly. He didn't just outclass Toshera. He just he humiliated him. Even getting dumped on his head like uh, DC did to him in their fight and taking a few big bombs, he just totally dominated him throughout the fight, dropped him multiple times, and uh, there was a straight-up video game combo that he landed in the second round, a spinning elbow with the seven follow-up punches uh, that dropped to share ridiculous stuff, uppercut landing all night until the the fifth round where he finished him with a triple uppercut <laughs> right hook combination. Uh, who the hell thinks of stuff like this? Uh, Gustafson's getting more creative, and uh, he's as dangerous as ever. It was a combo that Roy Jones Jr. would have been uh, very proud of. Uh, Gustafson, man, he definitely rekindled that, that fire of... Uh, the John Jones rematch. Uh, I think people have always wanted to see that rematch, but now they're definitely itching for that that fight again. And hell, if DC wins, I don't I don't know why too many people would complain about a DC versus Gustafson uh, rematch. That was a hell of a fight, uh, in my opinion, one of the best light heavyweight fights ever. And uh, getting engaged after the fight. Uh, congrats, congrats to Gustafson. Hell of a performance in his in his hometown front of all his people, making up for his last appearance in Sweden where he was left crying after uh, Johnson ruined his life. Uh, good on you, Gustafsson, not only for the victory, but for making light heavyweight very, very interesting again. In other news, Kat Zingano recently opened up about her UFC athlete retreat experience, and uh, she cleared up her tweet the uh, infamous Reebok 50% off coupon tweet. Um, it's no longer ambiguous of what she meant. She was being snarky, and um, she just felt very disrespected by UFC by the UFC, 
uh, and you know have uh, at this retreat shelling out who knows how many millions of dollars to these companies and and celebrities like Michael Strahan and Kobe Bryant, Snoop Lion, while most of the fighters uh, that were there were struggling. Kat also talked about some of the comments that Jessica Penne had made about a drunken Budweiser rep uh, that was being very condescending to the athletes, saying things like, uh, we don't want to hire losers and be yourself, be like Conor McGregor, uh, just downplaying the uh, the difficulty of winning inside the octagon. It all just seems very maddening. And whether it's the UFC or WME's tone deafness, they're going to have to eventually realize that this disrespectful attitude is only pushing fighters away. Think about Bellator back when Bjorn Rebney was running it. How many fighters wanted to leave? That was mostly an issue of the fighters not getting along with the promoter. Um, UFC didn't seem too keen to sign talent. Uh, back in those days, but now the revol the roles are reversed, and the Bellator does want to sign a uh, talent that might be leaving the UFC, um, and it has a lot of perks. Uh, no Reebok deal, free to get your own sponsors. Uh, they have Viacom in their back pocket, so they can shell out some pretty big paydays. Uh, less press. If you're not one of those that's too keen on uh, getting press, on doing too much press. That might be a good option for you. And the little known, the little talked about issue of USADA. Uh, no USADA to track down your every step, which I'm sure can be very, uh, very annoying to say the least. So let's remember that Bellator is taking their second foray into pay-per-view later on this month with uh, Chael Sonnen versus Vanderlei Silva at New York, in New York City. Um, I didn't pay, I didn't watch their first pay-per-view Bellator 120. It, it didn't really catch my attention, but I am going to see 180. And I'm actually, well, I actually want to watch it because of uh, Douglas Lima versus Lorenz Larkin. I'm a diehard, I, you know, the UFC doesn't care about me. You know, my, my money's guaranteed with them. But now I'm shelling out money to the competition because they let go of just one fighter and as inconse inconsequential as Lawrence Larkin seems, that is money that I probably wouldn't have shelled out otherwise because I don't care too much for Fedor or Chael Sonnen at this point. But you got to think about, uh, you know, some casual fans and nostalgic fans who do know and who do miss guys like that and will will tune in, especially over guys like. Jose Aldo and Max Holloway, as great great of fighters as they are, um, they don't really get the needle moving. And um, these instances will pop up again, most likely, and it's something that the UFC really should take into consideration. But in addition to the athlete retreat drama, uh, Zingano saying that she's currently in negotiations uh, to book a fight, and if rumors are to be believed, it sounds like it's a fight against Cyborg. Um, I'm not too interested in this fight, uh, mostly because I think it's meaningless. Uh, Cat's not a featherweight, and um, the only t the only way that this fight means anything is if Cat wins, which is pretty unlikely. Uh, the size, strength, and defensive disparity is just too great. Cyborg's just so much bigger, uh, better, and stronger. But um, should Cat win, and especially if Amanda Nunes, uh, if she should be Shevchenko again, uh, that should automatically book that rematch. But it just it just seems a bit confusing to me because I think if Cat were to fight and beat someone like Sarah McMahon, uh, that fight would be theirs for the taking. So it just doesn't it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And Cyborg doesn't seem too interested in taking on an inactive bantamweight on a two-fight losing streak. Uh, she still seems intent on the on the Megan Anderson fight, which everyone knows here I'm a fan of. The Anderson fight just seems to make the most sense at this point. Uh, not, only is, not only is Megan Anderson young and marketable, but she has a good style uh, for Cyborg. Should be an exciting fight. And she seems to be the only vi viable contender at this point since uh, Jermaine Durandamy had been AWOL. 
up until this week. So Jermaine Durandamy's manager uh, spoke out this week and he basically said point blank, Jermaine Durandamy will not defend the featherweight belt against Cyborg because she is a cheater and she does not want to fight a steroid user, a known steroid user. Um, Jermaine posted something a few days ago to refute her manager's point by basically just reiterating what he said. So Durandamy posted his message on Instagram and it says, uh, yes, I do not want to fight Cyborg because of her past. Um, I still haven't gotten any word back on uh, the status of my hand, if I'm going to need surgery or not. Uh, I have a full-time job and that needs to be taken into account. I need to weigh all my options. Uh, but basically none of that mattered because she claims that when she signed the fight, when she signed to fight Holly Holm, that she had told the UFC and the UFC was okay with her returning to Bantamweight after, after this fight. Maybe they didn't think she would win and they thought it would be no big deal, but now it's a big problem. And you know what? Maybe Durandamy does have a point. Maybe we shouldn't be okay with her fighting Cyborg because of her past, and maybe we shouldn't rail her for that. Um, it's, she's totally in her right to to uh, reject the fight. But I do have one one small problem with that gripe, and that is that uh, you, Mr. Randomy, fought most of your life, uh, have fought Muay Thai most of your life. In Europe, no less, uh, Muay Thai, a sport that is uh, notorious for having very little oversight and next to no testing. Um, you have most likely fought someone who is on some kind of PED. And not to mention, you've literally fought a man once. So I don't see what the big deal in fighting Cyborg is. But you know what? You know, times are changing. We're, we're getting more knowledge about things like CT and maybe those are, con you know, those are valid concerns of hers. Maybe she has one foot out the door already. Uh, maybe she just wanted to, you know, gain, have that, that, that strap, that UFC strap. Maybe that was just a dream of hers and she saw the opportunity and took it. But at the end of the day, I may be annoyed with Jermaine, but I really can't be mad at her because I, I really blame the UFC. Uh, they they wanted a title fight. They always need these title fights for any kind of UFC pay-per-view. Uh, they they rushed it. They just threw in two random bantamweights, and uh, now they're paying the price. Uh, it's it's a meaningless title. No hard no hardcore fans respected that title to begin with because it didn't involve Cyborg. Uh, but Durandamy, you know, must must be very very happy. Being a multiple-time uh, Muay Thai champion and now a uh, UFC champion, the first ever featherweight champion. Uh, Conor McGregor showed us uh, the belt's the only thing that matters. Conor McGregor is a two-time interdivisional, uh, you know, uh, champion, the the first ever in the UFC, and he's up there with Randy Couture and BJ Penn in his achievements, and he's no less of a champion than GSP or Anderson or any of the greats that have come before him. He has that that label of champion, and so does Durandamy. Uh, you can say that she's no different than Juana or Demetrius or Rousey. That, you know, that may not be the truth, but when it comes to the history books, that is what it will reflect. So if Durandamy wants to have that you know, title of champion, even if it was only for one night, then uh, good for her. Uh, it's very annoying what she's doing, but maybe it's a it's a good tactic. She can go back down to bantamweight and fight top five, top ten girls with having that distinction of being the first ever women's featherweight champion. Uh, maybe this will work out for her, or maybe she's gone running, or maybe she's going to retire. Who knows? But uh, no one on earth seems happy with the random here right now, and it's just more bad news for Cyborg. Uh, she doesn't have any titles lined up. She doesn't have any fights lined up. No title to fight for. And uh, she also has a misdemeanor uh, battery charge, thanks to your majesty, Angela Magana. 
So, sorry, cyborg. Say lovey. And that marks the end for today's show. So, as always, uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, both at juice underscore MMA. Uh, like my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash juice MMA. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment to this channel. Um, I'm going to try my best to keep these coming weekly. And uh, I appreciate all your guys' time. 